from the News Channel 5 Network. This is the Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour. Welcome to Tecus McGinnis Elder Care Law Hour, where we explore the many issues that arise due to aging, disability, and unexpected illness. I'm your co-host, Tim Tecus. And I'm Barbara McGinnis, and we're going to be talking about... Um, Healthcare. Well, healthcare, but research and preventive studies. Yeah. Nashville's often called the, the healthcare capital of the South, and we do have a lot of great healthcare in Nashville. We have lots of opportunities. But we're going to pick up the conversation where we left off last time, right. where we were talking about how does diagnosis, a new diagnosis, or a chronic health condition change your estate plan. Right. So specifically, Tim, if someone comes to you and they, they're they worried about their child's health care or they're worried about their child's future care needs, their child has some sort of um, life-altering diagnosis, right. mm -hmm. what do you do? Well, the first thing is, is like we always say, is is that whether that whether that illness or disability is long standing or whether it just suddenly occurred, anytime something like that happens, estate planning needs to change, or estate planning needs to, the person's estate planning needs to account for that. Right. You know, people get married, people get divorced, people go bankrupt, people have creditor problems, people get sick, all those sorts of things, and it may not affect you personally, but it could affect and often does affect your estate planning because in those situations where you have a child who has maybe special needs, mm -hmm. you know, maybe they developed, uh, maybe they have cerebral palsy, something that, that they've had for a lifelong, you know, or maybe it's an accident or an illness that you had a healthy child who was 50 years old and now is not so healthy, you know, then estate planning for the parent is typically needs to change because, I mean, you know from you know the many cases that we've had where parents come in and they're not so much worried about themselves. You know, they're worried that they're, li they're a 75-year-old parent taking care of a 55-year-old, you know, the child with a disability or a special need. And so our estate planning always needs to account for that. So in inevitably, in those kind of cases where the parent says, what is going to happen when I'm gone? Who's going to take care of my child? You know, what is that going to look like? You know, should I leave money to that child? Should I give it to, you know, his little brother and let him hold it? You know, all those sorts of things. And so that's, that, that's basically the, that's kind of the scene setting, you know, for those, for that kind of, uh, for that kind of case. And it's actually not uncommon for those parents to come in and say, well, I'm not going to leave any money to this child, but I'm going to leave it to their brother or sister, and I know they'll use it to take care of them. Is that really a good idea? Uh, almost never. Almost never. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and we all know from, you know, from our long experience of doing this is, is that, you know, we, we tend to say is, is that uh, if you want to leave if you leave something to a child and say hold it for somebody else, remember you're 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 talking about the most unreliable people on the planet. Well, which you know it sounds wrong to say that, but at the same time, life gets in their way too. Exactly, that's really what you mean. It re and that's yeah. really what I mean because you know those children almost always have good intentions. You know, but you don't know you know what what that child's uh, circumstances are. Right. You know, I, years and years ago, I had a case where Mama was trying, you know, she owned some property. She owned a warehouse, and she wanted to, she said, look, I don't need this anymore. I've got a house. I've got money, and I, wanna, I just want to give my warehouse to my kids. So we started having family meetings, and after the second meeting, one of the children came up to me and said, Tim, don't tell my mother, which a lawyer never wants to hear. Yeah. Because, um, you know, how do you not tell your client? You know, but she said, don't tell my mother, but my husband and I are in bankruptcy. And I'm going, oh, that's <laughs> why you really don't want this bank, this warehouse, do you? Not now. Not now. Maybe yeah. later. Or yeah. maybe maybe there's another way that we can, say, maybe put it into a trust or something so that it can be protected, Right. you know, for that child. And speaking of bankruptcy, I mean, there is a a lot out there right now that medical bankruptcy is one of the number one or medical costs are yes. one of the reasons for bankruptcy. bankruptcy exactly. And in fact, it's one of those things where Tennessee ranks very high. We're mm -hmm. like 11th in the nation in medical bankruptcies. Right. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. and, and that's not medical providers, it's people going bankrupt going because of bank. medical costs. Exactly. All right. So, 
Uh, so you have people that are on, okay, so they're, they're, let's say people are calling us, you yeah. know, and they're, they have a disability and maybe they're on public benefits. Okay, so what if they get an inheritance? That's kind of like the flip side here, right? Right, right. You know, where you have a, a parent that leaves, you know, wants to leave a, a, a something, an inheritance to a child who has a disability. But what if that person, what if the child now gets an inheritance? Right. Some what long you, lost uncle or something leaves them money, and right. it's like, okay, oh, so thank you very much. Mm, uh, yeah, mm, it's like, mm, but it, it depends, right? right? So, are we talking about enough money that it's solved all their worries in their life? Probably mm -hmm. not. not. Yeah, it's probably uh, a, a t maybe token money. Mm -hmm. Which is uh, often is, right? And, but mm -hmm. enough to cause a disruption in their public benefits if there were not particular plans for mm -hmm. that. So, so, so we can set up some special needs trusts. A yeah. person can set up their own special needs trust. Yeah. Um, parents, court, you know, we can do some things to set, if they're under the age of 65 when they inherit, right? Yeah, right. So that's, that's a fairly mm -hmm. easy and common thing that we do. Yeah. Well, but... You know, that sounds really complicated, but, okay, so let's say it's a $25,000 inheritance, uh, well, you know, that Uncle John yeah. leaves. Um, $25,000 $25, is not that hard to spend. Right. You might think about spending that. If you can spend it in, in the, the, very the, the period of time that your benefit program requires yeah. it to be spent. Yeah. But, or but why don't that just get like, like $100 bills and put them in an envelope? Do you, does that, is that a problem? <laughs> yeah, it's a problem. Okay, what, because, what's the because problem? Because you have to report those things to your oh. to your government agency. If you're talking oh. about SSI or Medicaid, okay. you, you have to report those okay, sorts of change don't? in status. Well, technically, that's fraud. Yeah, I guess it is. It's yeah. which is a felony. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's yeah. the F word that we don't like Wait, to, to use. use here. Yeah, yeah, that's that's our F word. Is that felony. Is F -word. Yeah. And so certainly you, your legal counsel wouldn't be part of that. But right. if you're contemplating that yourself, you're like, how are they ever going to know? I'm just going to take this money and I'm going to put it in a backpack and I'm going to put it in the closet and no one's ever going to know I have it. Well, m maybe. Maybe. But you don't want to uh, yeah. risk the right. consequences of, exactly. of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Most people don't like to do what's morally wrong anyway. That's right. right. So what can we really do for those people? There are different types of trusts where we're talking about a D4A trust, that's a self-settled trust. Maybe we're talking about a pool trust where they could mm -hmm. fund the, the account themselves. Depends on the amount of money that we're talking about. It depends on whether or not there's someone that would serve as a trustee for them. Because right. this is one of those instances where they could not be their own trustee. Right. And, and they would have to rely on a third party. Mm -hmm. Nor nearly attorneys like, uh, we're not going to be the trustee for someone. Right. And mm -hmm. they, they need to know that going in. And probably their accountant's not right. um, either. So, mm -hmm. and sometimes it's not a bad idea. Maybe, like maybe for a small amount of money, you can do maybe maybe it's twenty five thousand dollars. You can do something. Yeah. You know, maybe you have a child or other family member who can be a trustee because it's not that big of a deal. Well, you don't want to get into paying a third party trustee. That's the whole point. And, yeah, because so then that can be expensive. Some large trust companies here that do mm -hmm. great. Uh, work mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. administering trusts, but those are for your, you know, yeah. your m million, two million plus dollar trusts yeah. usually. Right. So what about ABLE accounts, A-B-L-E? ABLE accounts are sort of a unique little, uh, yeah. little product, and, and they're a very nice step forward in allowing someone with disability but still has some function that they can uh, administer, administer their own trust. Mm -hmm. There are limits as to who can have an ABLE account. Um, there, it's a little more restrictive than mm -hmm. a regular special needs trust. Um, limits on how that money is used. Limits on how much money you can invest total. Yeah. Limits on how much money you can invest per year. Yeah. But, so, it could, but it could be something for small amounts of money. But it could be a nice alternative for small amounts yeah. of money that a person that has some functional abilities, they could be in control of their own money. Right. Um, so, yeah, it's something to be considered. Mm -hmm. um, why is it important to have an estate plan, especially if you're an unsupported elder? 
if you're unsupported elder, and that's our term, you know, we yeah. don't like to use the term orphan, elder right. orphan. You know, we think because the point is you you can have a lot of friends, but it's about it's really about if an older person is unsupported. Right. Who's going to take care of me if right. I get old and you know, and maybe start having decline or whatnot? So those people, I mean, that group, you know, really does need need some sort of estate plan. Uh, you know, is there a family member, uh, a friend, uh, is there a public agency, is there an attorney or CPA? It's all about for the unsupported elders is a lot of them have money, but what they don't have is they don't have people that can help them. Yes, they may be uh, single, right. widowed, no children, uh, no close family members. Right. Anyway, we, we probably need to wrap up. We do. All right. So, well, up next we will be speaking uh, to... Um, I guess I think it's about um, research trials, right? Yeah, research trials. We're doing research trials. trials. So stay with us. We'll be right back. All right.